Hi, wee Bob here. Andrew Bell 6 is here. And I'm super excited because there's a lot of fantastic features that have been added to this software. And this is how I wanted to feel about Sketchbook, but it just didn't happen. So we're going to talk about the new features that have been brought to the software. But if you're interested in Rebel generally, check out my Rebel 5 in 10 minutes video. And I'll be doing an update to that shortly, Rebel 6 in however many minutes. Hopefully this weekend we will see. Depends on time. As a quick upfront, all of views are my own, the good and the not so good. Um, and there are some not so good parts here, but generally I'm pretty impressed. Sorry to tell you straight up front, I should have kept that to the end, but let's go into the new features. So starting off with a simple and welcome update is being able to put copies of our favourite brushes into this library here using the process shown on the screen. And why is this exciting? Because sometimes it's a pain in the butt to go to oils and then you want to do a really solid line you've got to jump to pencils and choose a digital pencil whereas now I can put everything into this wee favourite brushes place and it's all there for me ready to use. But let's go into some of the more exciting features and the second feature here we're looking at is reference image guides and this for me is a game changer in terms of workflow. Normally if I wanted a very accurate portrait of someone I would need to measure, take angles, figure out where their nose is compared to their eyes from the reference. Sometimes that can be difficult to do because you've got it on the screen, you zoom in, you zoom out and sometimes you lose your, your measurement because you can't lock the screen. It's actually easier to do it with a traditional photograph. So to insert a reference we can open the reference panel through Windows reference images and bring up the reference image panel. We can then just drag and drop reference images into this panel. When we click the eye icon we can get the reference image shown in, the, in a different panel and we have eight icons here. We've got a colour picker, fit to frame, flip horizontal, flip vertical, desaturate, show the image on the canvas if we want to trace, transform the image on the canvas and add guides. Now guides is where things get really interesting especially if you don't want to trace but just get those guides to how the eyes are set, where the nose is, the right positions, the top of the ears for example and you don't have to follow these because you're looking to just use some of the features of the face and to do a kind of mashup of portraits that way is just, it's brilliant. You can have multiple references with multiple guide sets. And as you can see on the screen, it is just a powerful, powerful feature. While talking about guides, we now have canvas guides and grids that can be added to our drawing. We can snap to these grids or use them as references. It's such a quick way if you use a grid method, which I've tried once on Sketchbook. And it was really quite a fast method to get a drawing down on the paper and be relatively accurate. All these tools are amazing, they're just going to help you along your art journey. These grids and guides can easily help us align our objects and again make life that wee bit easier. And as you can see illustrated in the screen how they are working. The next feature we're looking at is the brush creator updates. There are now three sections to the brush creator and all the settings you need to make new brushes will be found here. We can alter brush scale, brightness, contrast and so much more. There's too much to get into in this video in regards to brush creation but it's one of the more powerful tools that we have available to us and if we can master it we can definitely get different textures, different ways of drawing and it's going to be a future video because there is way way too much to cover here. Up next is image filters. We now have the filters of Gaussian blur, lens blur and sharpen as illustrated on the screen. There are new colour filter features and these have been added and are a brilliant feature for removing particular colours. For example, if we only want to remove the blues or the reds or the greens, using the colour picker we can select the colour that we want to do and we can even further fix the range or set a range of colours using these little sliding pointers at the bottom. This ability to customise the colours affected has also been added to other filters such as colourise, so check them out. Okay, so let's talk about the bigger exciting feature. And that is the liquify tool, the Godzilla of features that has been added and the next feature that we'll talk about in a minute. Now this is such an awesome addition as it just opens a door of possibilities that you would have for, for example with traditional art. If you do paint pouring for example we can use a liquify tool and use it with like as though we've got the end of our brush and we're running it through the paint and there's different versions here. We can also use it to make modifications to our drawings making things bigger, smaller and I'll show you them on the screen as I talk through the different versions here. So 
We've got our original smudge mode, which can be used. We then have our liquify push. The liquify expand. Liquify pinch. Liquify push left. Liquify twirl. Liquify reconstruct, which then undoes some of what you've done back to the original, if that's what you want. The opacity slider is the strength of the liquify that happens. As you can see, to make those adjustments, or just for pure creativity, this is a brilliant addition which has been brought to us in Rebel 6. On the downside, this tool does require a good bit of computing power, as does the next one. My computer, which I now realise needs an upgrade and check out the recommended settings i will put them in the description below for you to look at but you'll also find them on the escape motions web page which will also be linked in the description if you do buy it there'll be a link in the description as well if you use it which i would get a commission for that warning also applies to the next big feature that escape motions have added in rebel 6 and that is the warp tool the power of these past two tools this tool and the previous tool is undeniably a big lure to upgrading or to purchasing Rebel 6 for the first time. The warp tool can be used to just correct those issues that we may notice late in our process, such as an eye that's slightly too high or too large. The power with these tools is just it's undeniable and they've been used in other products as well over the years for just getting great effects. But yeah, check them out. They are fantastic as you can see on the screen. One feature that works on the same nanopixel technology that's in Rebel 5 is the ability now for you to take a selection of your drawing and upscale it. The program will then do some interpretation to ensure the pixelation is reduced and you get a kind of nice, smoother, larger image. Kind of like upscaling in DVDs when Blu-ray came out if you're old enough to remember that. But this feature is called Fractal Transform and you need to make sure you select that when you're doing your transform. Before we go on to another big feature that has been added, there are some simple things that have been included. One of which I was excited about seeing was the ability to control the length of the stroke we make. This can be really useful for stylizing our art with short strokes or just getting the feeling that the paint's running out. Now, using this so far, I think this feature is great, but maybe needs some tweaks to affect the brush stroke with some random feature or something, just to make it feel like real paint or like a bristles moved out of place. This may exist, but I haven't found it yet, but still a great feature, and hopefully maybe they may tweak it in the future, or I will figure out how to get that little randomization into the brush stroke. So, we are getting on to the last big features of Rebel 6, and that is masking layer and clipping layers. Now, these have existed in many other painting programs, as I mentioned with the other tools, but to bring them to Rebel and get that traditional art feeling in the digital world, along with these amazing Photoshop type tools, it just brings the, the product up another level. And they're a welcome addition for many people. Now, layer masking is not something that I use a lot. Uh, certainly a, a feature that I want to explore more, but as you can see, that's how these features have now been added in and I'm kind of showing you how to use them on the screen. Like I said, I will do a longer video on layer masking, clipping masking and all the features of Rebel 6 in future videos and go into how you use them step by step. Anyway, as you can see, this is a big step forward for the Rebel software. There'll be more videos coming up into some details on how to use these features and the difference between the Pro and other versions. But for the moment, thanks for watching and we Bob is out.